Hey, Coach, I was wondering what you think makes Curran Walton a great shooter. Uh, great form. No, There's no great shooter that doesn't have great technique. So uh, I think that his is unusual. Uh, he has a little bit of a side spin on the ball that uh, is not as usual. It's not the normal uh, great-looking shot that you see, except as he releases it, it's a perfect follow-through. And, you know, Jamal Wilkes, Robert McAdoo, uh, Terry Brown, the best three-point shooter I ever coached at Kansas, uh, they all had different techniques. But uh, you've got to finish with a great follow-through and your hand straight forward toward the rim. The shooting finger split in the middle of the target and those kind of things. But how you get to that point, it's sort of like uh, Jim Furyk's golf swing. There's different ways to get to that point. But if you don't have uh, a solid, solid technique uh, that keeps you away from mistakes, then you better shoot a million of them. And I think that uh, Kerwin has shot a million of them and he'll shoot another million the next week probably. And uh, uh, he does have the great follow through. So you've got to protect, uh, perfect, excuse me, perfect your own way of shooting. Did you expect him to be contributing this much and starting for you when you recruited him at this point in the season, this early? Well, I knew that uh, last year we were really shorthanded on the number of people that could put the ball in the basket. So that's what we talked to Kerwin about and told him if he got there and he did a job defensively and kept trying to get better defensively that it would more than likely work out that he would get a lot of playing time. And that's exactly the way it's worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Rick Bozich. Rich, go ahead. Or Rick, go ahead. Hey, Roy. Um, Mike Bray talked a little bit uh, a few minutes ago about the scenario over the weekend where you guys ended up playing Notre Dame on the fly. Just wanted to get your uh, your take on how the whole thing went down and how do you think it worked out? Well, you know, the bottom line is it worked out better for us than it did for Michael because we were fortunate enough to win. But I think we needed to play games. We're in a situation now in our country where – Cases are going up dramatically. Uh, I'm concerned each and every morning when I get up to see if we're going to have the opponent that we thought we were going to have. And uh, and I think uh, uh, Mike had the same ideas that we need to play games and need to get some games under our belt and need to do as many things as we can. Uh, I talked to Clint Gwaltney, who's our assistant AD here. He had talked to the ACC. I said, let me visit with my staff and I want to call Mike and so I visited my staff about two or three minutes and called Mike. And uh, when he answered the phone, he said, if you're willing to play, I'm willing to play. And I said, well, Mike, I am, but let's just talk through a couple of things. Do you see any advantage or disadvantage for either one of us? And I said, because, you know, you got to play at home and I had to play on the road, but on this game, you'll be playing on the road. I'll be playing at home. So we both had one road and one home in the last two games. Uh, I don't really see any advantage or disadvantage. It was, uh, we had given our team the day off, uh, so we weren't going to practice at all. Uh, I don't think that he was planning on having a big practice. And needless to say, he didn't prob probably didn't put in a full scouting report on uh, North Carolina in the next half hour kind of thing. So for me, it was uh, no advantage, no disadvantage either way. And he agreed. And uh, we thought we should go ahead and try to play. And again, uh, the game itself went off, uh, went on without any hitches or anything. And he said they had a plane that was going to take them to Pittsburgh. They could reroute it to North Carolina. And I told him we had somebody here that knew where the light switches are so they could get the lights on. And, uh, and it worked out that we were able to play the game without any problems. But of course, I feel better about it than Mike did because we had one more point. Uh, David Teal, you are next up. Roy, along those lines, and given all the, the, the pivots and adjustments that everybody has to make and probably will continue to make, are you more or less comfortable today with the season and all the processes involved than you were when you started? You know, David, I haven't, I haven't been comfortable a single moment with everything we're doing, uh, but I think it's the right thing to do as long as we keep our eyes and ears open and use our brain. I'm more concerned about these next three weeks than any time this season because of the gatherings of Christmas and New Year's and the likelihood of more of these cases continuing to come. Uh, so I'm scared to death, uh, but I do. I wake up every morning thinking, okay, what's going to happen to college basketball today? And uh, so I've more or less just had uh, 
uh, focus of, okay, today looks like today's going to be all right. Let's prepare and do everything we can and then get up the next day and try to make a determination of what that day is going to be like. The NCAA today finalized the plans and announced them for Indianapolis and centralizing the tournament. A good move in your mind? Probably so. I think, you know, the more you can limit travel, uh, contact with more people, if you play at eight different sites or 16, I don't know how many sites we have early on, you have a, a greater margin of coming into contact with more people than you do if you have it all in the same city. And uh, uh, Indianapolis has the hotel space, the gymnasium space, uh, everything I think that we need. So uh, that doesn't bother me. And in fact, I think it's a good plan. Thank you. Thanks, David. Uh, Mark Larson, you are next up, sir. Uh, hi, Coach Williams. Um, given all that you were just saying about the, the next few weeks and, uh, and your concern and all the games being switched around the last second and it seemingly everything in chaos and probably going to get worse, would you be in favor of uh, putting everything on a pause for a few weeks or um, – you know, like Coach K was saying uh, last month, maybe we shouldn't even play till February. What, where do you come out on that? Oh, you know, again, it changes, Mark, every day, I think, because we get different information every day. I would have liked for us to have waited uh, until the spring and just instead of having March Madness, uh, somebody else said it. it may have been Rick, or Mike, I don't remember who have made Madness. I think that would have given us more time to get closer to a vaccine and, uh, uh, but the bottom line is we did not do that. I, I don't have a great plan right now. I try to lean on the medical people, the scientists, uh, and for them to tell us what's best. Uh, I'm scared to death about the, uh, the spike that we see all around the country right now. And some people just think they're invincible. And uh, uh, some people still think that it's a hoax. And I'm not uh, anywhere near to that uh, camp, to say the least. But uh, it is something that... Uh, uh, I don't know it yesterday and today I may have different tomorrow I may have different feelings, but scared to death is the way that I'm approaching this entire season. Well, you think it's a good idea to keep pressing on. Well, I do. And it's, uh, but who knows? I mean, guys, we had, I looked at one list of score, a score sheet, 32 games were listed as postponed to cancel on that one scroll that I had off my phone. So it's, I think it's going to get worse. And, uh, uh, but that's just my opinion. No, no scientist, no medical person has given me reason to uh, agree with me or disagree with me. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Got time for one more question. Uh, Ken Cross. Go ahead, sir. Coach, go into the hardwood for a minute. Uh, did you see Dayron Sharp maybe build toward the type of game he had Saturday? He's been phenomenal in our practices, guys, and even – Early on in the fall when we were practicing and we had Tyler Zeller and Tyler Hansbro and Theo and Cam and Kobe. That was the five guys on the blue team one day, and it was really good. And they were all tremendously impressed with Dayron. And I think that, uh, you know, getting him uh, to this level is just a testament of how hard he's continued to work. Uh, I think that we'd like for him to uh, be able to work even harder on a more consistent basis at a higher level. But... He was dominating, to say the least, in the in the game on Saturday. Uh, after Durham got in foul trouble, uh, there was just not uh, the number of big guys. There's Notre Dame, and I'm not trying to critique or say anything about Mike's team, but we felt like we had a tremendous advantage there. And he just plays so hard. He makes things happen and, and normally makes things happen in a good sense for North Carolina. Thanks, Coach. Today we appreciate it.